Hello and welcome to the AIM webinar series. Today's session is UDI compliance problems and why they matter with our speakers Chris Anderson and Kate McAllister of UMED. First, a little bit about AIM. AIM is the Industry Association for Automatic Identification and Data Capture Technologies. We are an unbiased resource for advocacy of the effective use of these important technologies, creating a vibrant community for networking, which creates and maintains standards and other educational materials. If you are not an AIM member and are in this space, you really need to be. Reach out to us to learn more on our opportunities to network, solve industry issues, and influence the automatic identification and data capture industry. Now briefly, I'll go over the AIM antitrust policy. It is the policy of AIM to conduct its operations in strict compliance with the antitrust laws. No AIM activity shall create even the appearance of a violation of the letter or spirit of the antitrust laws. And some other housekeeping notes, all participants are muted in this web webinar, but we do want your participation. Send our, our panel questions via the Q&A option that you can find at the bottom of the application screen. Questions will be answered at the end of the webinar and all registrants to the webinar will receive a notification when the recording is available on our YouTube channel. Now I wanted to give a brief introduction to our speakers. Chris Anderson is the Director of Technical Program Management at ViewMed. Chris leads product planning, development, and delivery drives international oper internal operations improvements and specializes in database, administrative visualization, project management, and content management systems. And Kate McAllister is a customer support operations manager at ViewMed. Kate enhances client experiences and operational processes, focusing on patient safety, data management, and compliance, and brings over a decade of experience in customer success and operations management. Looking forward to hearing their insights on this topic. With all that said, I'd like to now turn it over to you, Kate. Thank you, Bethany. Okay, thank you so much. We'll just jump right into it. So um, the global medical device industry is valued at around $600 billion with devices directly impact patient care, making an efficient supply chain crucial. Um, current challenges in inventory management, um, many healthcare facilities struggle with tracking and managing inventory, leaving a large portion of devices and supplies unmonitored which can directly impact patient care and operations. Um, I know everyone loves a metaphor. So very much like an iceberg, visual inventory is just the tip. Hitting, hidden untracked supplies create underlying risks that only emerge when problems arise. Um, some of the most resounding impacts of poor inventory management we found are bloated inventory. Um, over 20% of items are overstocked. Um, this increases costs and waste, um, excess purchases, 15% uh, or more of purchases are unnecessary due to inaccurate data, which can in turn um, impact budgets. Um, waste levels, waste can exceed 20% due to expired or unusable items um, and miss charge capture. Over 18% of charges are missed at the point of care leading to lost revenue and billing issues. Um, the role of UDI compliance or UDI, uh, which is the unique uh, device identification, um, UDI compliance could improve traceability, accuracy, and accountability, uh, and addressing many of these issues by enhancing inventory management. Improved inventory practices and UDI compliance are essential for cost control, operational efficiency and better patient care, healthcare stakeholders need to prioritize these to address hidden inventory issues effectively. By fixing these hidden inventory issues, um, it isn't just about saving money. It's about making sure patients get the care they need. And by focusing on better tracking and UDI compliance, healthcare can reduce waste and improve efficiency. Next slide, please, Bethany. So now I'll introduce you to medical device recalls. Um, medical device recalls are significant concerns as faulty devices can endanger patients. In 2023 alone, we had a record number of recalls, uh, underscore, which underscored the need for better quality control. Last year saw 975 recalls affecting over 283 million units. And this marked the highest recall rate in the last seven years. 
and highlights the need for improved tracking systems. Class one recalls, though there are only few, are the most serious. These involve devices that can cause injury or death and require swift action from healthcare providers and manufacturers. The challenges in recall management um, are tracking and removing devices can be very, very complex, especially for millions of units. And this often requires a clinical follow-up. Inefficient systems can delay these actions and increase risk for patients. Uh, the role of UDI recall management UDI systems can improve recall management by enabling precise tracking, helping healthcare providers quickly locate and remove affected devices. These recall numbers show that robust tracking and compliance systems are crucial for patient safety and proactive UDI compliance is key to improving safety and operational efficiency. With more recalls happening, it's clear we need better tracking to help keep patients safe and using UDI can help healthcare providers quickly find and remove faulty devices. And this, re this overall reduces risk for patients. We'll go to the next slide. So unique, uh, unique device identifier um, or UDI is an FDA mandated, uh, FDA required system for tracking medical devices throughout their life cycle. Their life cycle from manufacturing to patient care and includes unique identifiers that specify details like manufacturer, model, and batch, um, uh, as well as uh, lot and expiration or serial numbers. Um, UDI refers to a class of medical devices registered in the Global Unique Identification Database, or GoodID, um, which is a public public publicly searchable resource designed to provide transparent and comprehensive information for patients, healthcare professionals, regulators, and others for tracking and analysis. The UDI system was rolled out starting in 2024 with its initial phases being completed in 2016. Um, and this has offered an unprecedented device um, tracking capability. The primary goals of UDI um, uh, adverse event resolution. This enables quick identification and investigation of devices and adverse events. Um, patient safety supports faster recall management to remove harmful devices. Clinical integration. Um, facilities, um, this, excuse me, uh, clinical integration facilitates seamless data integration into health healthcare IT systems. Regulatory compliance. Uh, this simplifies communication with the FDA and meets tracking and reporting requirements. UDI, uh, UDI compliance is very important. It's essential for device traceability, recall management, and maintaining effective regulatory com uh, communication, safeguarding patient health. Uh, we encourage UDI adoption to improve patient outcomes, streamline operations, and enhance healthcare quality and safety beyond regulatory needs. UDI is just more than a tracking system. It's a tool for a safer and smarter healthcare. By adopting UDI, we're not only meeting regulations, but also improving patient safety, streamlining recalls, and creating a stronger foundation for quality care. Uh, next slide, please, Bethany. So slide five, we're gonna go through uh, the UDI components. UDI has two main parts. The first part is the device identifier, and this is specific to the device model and consistent across all units. And then your product identifier um, or PI, this varies by lot, serial number, or exp uh, expiration date for precise tracking. With these two main components, the device identifier and production identifier, UDI provides detailed tracking for each device and helps ensure accurate identif identification and safety throughout its cycles. Um, you will also note on the right-hand side of the slide that there is a UDI encoded RFID tag. Um, uh, RFID tag is like a QR code or a 2D barcode 
Um, and this houses all of the information, um, uh, DI and PI. Uh, Bethany, can we go to the next slide, please? Advantages of UDI compliance. Um, and key benefits of UDI compliance are medical errors. Um, this reduces medical errors, uh, leading cause and death by ensuring accurate device identification and usage. Um, effective recall management streamlines response to device recalls, enabling quick removal of affected products and mis minimizing patient risk. Counterfeit prevention helps prevent counterfeit devices in healthcare by ensuring authenticity and quality compliance. Um, supply chain efficiency increases visibility and control, it reduces waste and lowers costs, as well as optimizes inventory management. Uh, regulatory compliance, this meets mandatory requirements, which avoids penalties and safeguards reputation. Uh, it's encouraged that stakeholders prioritize UDI compliance as a strategic move for improving patient safety, operational efficiency, regulatory adherence. This is just beyond meeting obligations. Making UDI compliance a priority helps keep patients safe, makes recalls easier, and improves the efficiency of healthcare systems overall. Let me go to the next slide. Uh, UDI management challenges in healthcare. Complex inventory. Managing thousands of medical devices and supplies with UDIs is challenging. This requires significant resources and can impact efficiency. High volume and costs. Healthcare facilities manage over 5,000 5, items and spend millions in, um, annually on supplies, highlighting the need for efficient UDI tracking to control cost. Waste and expiration risks. Each month, 8 to 20% of supplies risk expiring or being wasted, leading to financial losses. A strong UDI system can help minimize this waste. Procedure accuracy impact. Uh, around 50% of procedures are at risk of using incorrect or incomplete supplies, potentially compromising patient safety. Accurate UDI tracking can help ensure proper supply management. Encourage healthcare organizations to invest in effective UDI systems to, to optimize inventory management, reduce waste, and enhance patient care quality. Investing in a strong UDI system can help healthcare organizations cut waste, save costs, and improve patient care by keeping inventory accurate and ready when it's needed the most. Uh, this concludes my section. And so now I'll hand it over to my colleague, Chris, who will take you through the next part of our presentation. And I thank you all for your attention. Thank you, Kate. All right, thank you, Bethany. So in the second part of our presentation, we're going to talk about the key points having to do with UDI and some practical applications. I'll describe the workflow as it ought to be and is in fact widely in use today. And I'll also have some examples where non-compliance with the UDI standard can cause headaches for clinical staff and supply chain professionals and can lead to issues prov uh, in providing care and managing critical medical device inventory. Um, so at the end of the day, UDI compliance is all about accuracy of data capture. So from the point that a product is manufactured to uh, being purchased at the hospital, used in the clinical setting, and then going to uh, billing, a single point identifier is crucial to maintain the supply chain efficiency and accuracy. Uh, billing and purchasing staff will have the confidence in the products they are working with, knowing for certain that they are ordering and billing for what has actually been used in the clinical setting. And uh, this ena also enables in-depth analysis built on a uh, wealth of solid data. You know, we have uh, users who have spent years accumulating a, basically a critical mass of data using UDI, and now they have a huge advantage over their competition because they can look back on years of data that helps them uh, inform decisions about today's clinical procedures. So when tracking patient outcomes or from the other direction, executing device recalls when products are 
out in the world. It is paramount that we have an unbroken chain of device identification from the point of manufacturer through the supply chain and into the clinical system and out to the general public. So as uh, and Kate mentioned uh, with her great description of the uh, UDI system, UDI is part of a FDA provided encoding system. And so when the product is created, a 14 digit UDI is registered into a database maintained by the FDA. And that's called the Global Unique Device Identification Database. That's a mouthful. So it's called Good ID for short. And this is, database is free and open to the public. Uh, a good ID entry contains not only the product identifier, but also key product information about product details, commercial distribution status, FDA approval status, and any recall alerts. And so this database is meant to be the central hub where all the device tracking starts so that each stakeholder, no matter what part of the chain they're in, is re referencing the same data source. And when you're maintaining records about a product, you use UDI, and that will allow accurate data to pass between disparate systems, systems that largely do not talk to each other except for maybe this single point. So there's no guessing about what a product is or having to merge different sets of data between systems who each use their own bespoke identifier, like a billing code or a service line. Uh, so this, this type of thing is a common language that all the systems can use. So if we have, uh, like I just said, if we have pools of data containing UDI, such as an inventory management system, and then the clinical documentation system, they're all referencing products the same way, that's great. But it doesn't really matter if the digital records do not match up with what is being seen in the physical world. And this is where labeling and barcode recognition becomes key. So like I said, there's a 14 digit UDI and that's registered to the uh, GS1 standard of barcodes. Uh, so really quickly, uh, GS1 is a international nonprofit maintaining barcode standards. So I don't need to go into much detail other than to say UDI adopts that uh, GS1 standard. And specifically they use the uh, global trade identif or excuse me, global trade item number 14 or G1014 standard, and that is supported by GS1. And uh, this is to make the barcoding uh, consistent and the G1014 meets the uh, needs of the type of products because it supports lot number and expiration date as part of the encoding. So I'll get to the punchline about barcodes, which is to say each product with a UDI gets a G10 barcode. That G10 barcode contains the UDI, and the expectation is that the G10 reflects the single identifier for that product. So if we could go to the next slide, please. Right, so that being said, unfortunately, it doesn't always end up uh, working that way. Uh, we've seen a different number of ways that the UDI system has been misapplied, oftentimes just by a simple printing error or mistake, or uh, perhaps the uh, application is being used for some other unknown process. So if you uh, see the, the photo in the slide here, uh, we have a product that has been uh, labeled, uh, the, the catalog number ends in 0003. The barcode on the package is in fact a valid G10 barcode identifying a real UDI, but it's just the wrong one. So when inventory or clinical staff get a hold of this product, and scan it using whatever documentation software they may be using uh, in any point in the uh, supply chain process, the incorrect product is gonna, going to get uh, captured. So I'll go more detail about the workflow in the clinical setting and use this example to describe how it gets disrupted. So this particular product is a heart pump that allows heart failure patients to receive vital care and possibly return home without needing a heart transplant. And hospitals performing certain procedures classify this and other uh, similar products as critical items. So that means they absolutely must have it on hand. They are possibly legally required to have it on hand. So inventory managers will keep a certain number in stock at all times. So if they, if they are mandated to have three on the shelves, they might have five on hand and they never ever 
let that number drop below three. So as soon as one gets used in a case, they uh, have systems in place to automatically order another one. So ideally we use the barcode to scan the product in and out of inventory. So when it arrives at the loading dock, it gets scanned into inventory. When it arrives in the clinical setting and gets uh, committed to a case, it gets scanned out of inventory. And so then the, uh, this, the inventory management system reflects what is physically on the shelves. So, like I said, the product in this uh, on this package, or excuse me, the barcode on this package doesn't reflect the product's actual UDI. So there's a few things that can happen here. Uh, the clinician may receive the product, but the scan captures the wrong wrong product. So it doesn't decrement the correct product from inventory. So if they are, uh, you know, if if they are really diligent, they might have to stop what they're doing in a time crunch and make sure that they document the consumption of the correct product manually. And this is disruptive for the clinical team who are working in you know a high pressure situation. This is a uh, heart failure uh, procedure. So you can imagine that, th that that is serious. And uh, one of the reasons for having a system like UDI is to limit the friction that hospital workers deal with in the course of just doing their jobs. Um, oftentimes, the person who is doing the scanning in the uh, in the clinical setting is managing department level inventory on top of their main responsibilities as a nurse or a technician. And so anything that can be done to ease that additional workload will make life easier for the clinician and improve patient outcome by letting those folks focus on their actual work. Uh, another possible outcome in this situation is that the record for this product was uh, just missed. Uh, it doesn't get resolved. And so now the inventory levels uh, for this critical item are now out of sync with what is actually physically on the shelves. So the hospital expects that they have a product when in fact they might run out. <laughs> and uh, so now they have not only um, are they in danger of not being able to provide clinical care. They're also possibly in violation of the law. And I have firsthand experience with how clinicians try to mitigate this danger, like hiding extra products above the ceiling panels in the break room. So it's a situation that we'd rather not rely on that method. And so accurate data capture really makes these types of situations pretty easy to avoid. And a big part of that is to make sure that the labeling is correct and readily available. Could you go to the next slide, please? All right, so in this uh, slide, we have a, a product that is in commercial distribu distribution, but has not been registered in the uh, Good ID database. The Good ID database being what we were referring to earlier as the central hub of all these products. And you can see uh, that the product packaging on the left and a search of that UDI on the uh, Good ID website doesn't return a result. So this creates a problem when you're trying to look up status updates for a product. Kate mentioned all the uh, useful information that is there. As you know, the Good ID database has critical details about a product. <laughs> and so if you, if you need to reconcile any sort of status updates, it's not possible if the product just simply isn't registered in the database. So we would like to be able to tie products across multiple systems using UDI without, without a record in the main database. This just isn't possible. In this situation, hospitals often come up with their own identifying conventions, and those might not even cross between departments. So it would be best if we flag this product so that it can get added to the database and hospitals don't have to worry about tracking it themselves. Um, it is possible that this particular product went into circulation before FDA approval in a clinical trial, and then eventually ended up in commercial distribution, and then but just never got registered. So it's important to catch these issues as they arise. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so the flip side of missing data is too much data. Here we have a, uh, a single product 
that if you uh, if you look it up in the Good ID database, it returns multiple results, and that means essentially that it has two UDIs, which defeats the purpose of having a UDI system. Um, sometimes when you're working in inventory management in a hospital, you're talking about four, five, maybe more entities that have their hands in the supply chain and are tracking products for various uh, purposes. So perhaps the inventory manager uh, will get the correct UDI for this product because they actually scan the product physically and they had it in their hands. But then somebody in another building or another state, uh, maybe they're in billing and they are working with an internal database and they have another number, uh, then that that, be, that becomes a, uh, a mismatch and uh, you can have issues with, with billing or reordering, things kind of get lost and then they have to be tracked down individually when things are stop being uh, flowing basically through the cycle. Um, and then if you are try, if you're a hospital manager and you're trying to do research on a product, um, you might not just not even know what the correct UDI is because you're looking here on this this website or you've ingested this database for your own purposes. And now you don't know which is the correct ID for the product. Um, you might have to call your clinical staff and find out what they have. And hopefully both UDIs are not actually printed on barcodes. Um, we have seen situations where the UDI is kind of hijacked in lieu of a lot or origin of manufacture. And so that will generate dozens of UDIs for a, for a single product. And that's obviously not, not the purpose of the system. So they might need to pull up multiple clinical documentation systems and see how to reconcile the product. So this creates major headaches. And But when you have fully adopted the UDI system, having these outliers slows down your process and requires additional research, which is what we're trying to avoid. And uh, next slide, please. So I'll just touch briefly on this one. Um, this is again to say that clinical staff deserve to have a clear and streamlined workflow and data capture is basically what that hinges upon. So in this one, we have a G10 and a QR code barcode. The QR code is a, um, it leads to a marketing website. It'll try to navigate your phone or whatever. And then the one below is the actual UDI with uh, two forms of, of G10, one concatenated and one not. Um, well, it's not, certainly not illegal. We would like to see this type of thing phased out in favor of product packaging that is designed to display and transmit data in the clearest manner possible. Because again, we're talking about uh, high pressure situations. We wanna create low friction for clinicians and we wanna make sure that the, the data is captured so that we can accumulate all this great data to, to do analysis and inform decisions. So uh, next slide, please. Right, so, so as we've explained along the way, I, I hope we've illustrated how accurate application of the UDI standard can create a unified and streamlined flow of data across multiple areas. And uh, we at ViewMed always advocate on behalf of patient care providers and highlight areas that could be improved and uh, catch these compliance issues as they occur. Our, our goal with adopting UDI, as I said before, is to ensure accurate capture at point of care first and foremost, so that that data can be passed along all the other links of the chain along the product's life cycle. And uh, next slide, please. And again, just to recap what we talked about today, the, uh, the system we have is a tremendous opportunity to provide insights at every level, whether you use UDI for analytics purposes and tracking patient outcomes or recalls, or you're a supply chain manager trying to work around a budget while still meeting clinical needs. And uh, as we move forward into the next era of healthcare that is marked by greater automation and larger sets of data, we can use resources like UDI to improve patient outcomes and maximize operational effectiveness. Let's see, and next slide, please. And so a common question that I get uh, is when I'm talking to people about UDI is, well, how do, we, how do we avoid these issues and how do we increase compliance? 
And so the the first the first answer to that question is uh, is just to use the system. Stakeholders such as clinicians and supply chain managers can have open communication with manufacturers who are very responsive and are, have already made a lot of progress towards adopting the system. And just building up that critical mass of data <laughs> based on UDI um, will just uh, prove prove not, not only prove its worth, but it will just start to become uh, more more of a regular part of uh, the supply chain uh, system. And so it just kind of becomes uh, no no different than it, than any other part of a of a functioning supply chain. So through and then for uh, for specific individual compliance issues through the Good IDs uh, website, you can voluntarily report issues about products. Um, the mandate is to follow the standard is not enforceable at this time. But manufacturers have already done a good job just getting their product identification and labeling up to speed. And then looking to the future, uh, people who are interested should pay attention to forthcoming legislation. So the FDA is reviewing the success of a different uh, set of legislation called the Drug Supply Chain Security Act. And that is something that require that uh, contains requirements for uh, identifying pharmaceuticals in a somewhat similar method to UDI. And uh, that legislation is in effect and is likely that any legislation concerning uh, medical devices is going to borrow its framework from there. So with that, that concludes our presentation. And Bethany, I would love to open up to any questions that people may have. All right, so we have a lot of questions today. We're gonna to try to get through as many as we can. Um, let's see here. The first question we have is, do hospitals check the products they buy to ensure that they are UDI compliant? And if not, why not? I'll take that, Kate. So, ahead. yep. So um, it's a good question. So. Typically, the uh, the hospital will have some sort of inventory management system. Um, more and more often, those systems are coming uh, with uh, UDI as part of the way that they uh, ingest products. Uh, hospitals that perhaps have uh, legacy systems, they might use their own internal identification system, like we'll have... Uh, hospitals that have a three ring binder full of barcodes that they printed themselves and they just have a system where they said they know product a is this barcode on page one and so they'll they will try to uh man manage it that way and so one of the challenges is having uh inventory management systems that can actually uh capture and parse the g10 barcode and so <clears throat> that is becoming more common and that is something ViewMed does. But uh, as to why, oftentimes it's just a legacy system and uh, these places, they they require rock solid uh, uh, procedures that, and so they're sometimes hesitant to change. And so that would probably be the number one reason why. But once they do adopt uh, UDI and start parsing barcodes uh, with the lot and expiration and all that, it really starts to improve their outcomes. I can piggyback off of that just a little bit. <clears throat> so, um, so no, no, not, I'm not in my experience. No, not all hospitals um, have someone who's checking for UDI and there actually are still a few hospitals um, that still manage their inventory by just writing it down on a piece of paper. Um, so there are much better ways, more efficient ways, uh, more, proven ways to to use UDI and, and have an inventory management system. But no, there's not every hospital is doing that. All right. And then the second question we have today is how do healthcare systems get incorrect UDI information on the label or in good ID corrected? Right. So there is a uh, basically a web form on the good ID website. And so you can uh, you can flag the products that way. That's that's the uh, 
best way to do it. You can also, if you are, uh, say, in supply chain or inventory management, you can also contact your vendor. But the, be the best thing is to get that record um, formally submitted uh, through the Good ID website. All right, and then our next question, is it necessary to implement a UDI system for a single use device? So yes, so if I understand the question, um, you're talking about consumable devices. Um, something that gets used one time then, and then is either disposed of or it's implanted. Um, yes, absolutely. So the, uh, the and Kate, Kate, you can uh, add on to this, but uh, the, the G10 uh, format allows for lot and expiration uh, tracking of products. So when we're talking about a UDI, we're talking about a line of products, uh, which are are single use, many of which are single use. And so you're talking about the entire uh, fleet of products, you know, enter moving into the into the world when, as they're used in uh, in patient cases. And so yes, absolutely, that uh, UDI that is attached to that consumable device can be used for things like. Uh, device recalls for patient outcomes. So yes, absolutely, uh, UDI is used for uh, for single use devices. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just a little bit more in depth here. Uh, like Chris mentioned, implants like things like Watchmen's, Tavars, Mitral Clips, like things like that that are actually implanted inside of the body. Um, UDI is very important because um, it houses the serial number. So they can also identify specifically what item went into this person. It's easier to identify recalls. It's easier to go back and say, hey, patient A, this was put inside them. Um, but yeah, so it's so it's very helpful. Single use items, even like um, you can use syringes, anything and as big or as small as you want. UDI is, is available. Right. And then our next question here is how frequent are barcodes misprinted or unreadable? Um, uh, I would say it's relatively in, infrequent. Um, uh, we do wish that there was a little bit more compliance as far as GS1 um, and how G10s and uh, especially with things like the 2D barcode, that's being printed a lot more on devices and supplies, which is very, very easy. That's super, super easy. It's the cleanest, the easiest thing to scan. Uh, you, there will be some occasions on certain supplies. Uh, I think a lot of uh, anyone who works in patient care, anyone who works in uh, this, this field will know there are some packages where the barcodes are kind of questionable. Like they get rubbed against another piece of plaster or another piece of paper, and it'll kind of start to fade a little bit. Those are more difficult um, to scan. But pretty much every item, you'll find a few a few things here or there, like needles or uh, surge supply or central access items that don't have barcodes or any UDI. Yeah, it's a it's a relatively uh, low percentage of all the products uh, that we're talking about in a uh, in a world with millions of of products. But it also is somewhat on a manufacturer by manufacturer uh, basis. Some manufacturers haven't really got on board yet. And so they are consistently uh, putting out non-UDI compliant devices while others have completely switched over. And the, the only issues they might have is uh, just like a clerical error or like a barcoding, you know, encoding error or something like that, which is more than likely just like a one-off and it won't even translate to the next barcode so yeah it's it's a it's a low uh low percentage but like in the example that i showed you earlier that particular item is one a high value item costing in the tens of thousands of dollars and it is uh, critical both for patient care and for legality purposes so uh, um even with a low percentage of products being non-compliant, it can really sort of be a showstopper. 
All right, and our next question here, um, is it mandatory to collaborate with regulatory agencies to establish a UDI system or can it be set up internally by a manufacturer of a medical device? Yeah, so I'm gonna say I don't know the I'm with 100% certainty, but um, the each manufacturer is assigned a uh, a GS1 code, which basically is your manufacturer's sort of uh, prefix, and so that way that G10s are not stepping over each other. So I don't. I will admit that I don't know the full process for how that registration happens, but I do know that each manufacturer um, basically registers with GS1. I'm wondering, because I know there are custom packs that are that are provided uh, for certain departments. So again, yeah. I'm not I'm not 100% sure, but I do feel like internally that that's something that can be done. Um, but yeah, so Bethany, if you, to look into. Yeah. yeah, Bethany, if you want to get an email, we can look at we can look into it and get that answer. Okay, yep, I can do that for you guys. Yeah, like, you, we, we, we have we are registered with GS1 and we have a rep, so we could just ask. <laughs> All right, and then let's see. So the next question we have here um, is the actual entry in good ID, the GTIN 14 only, it, for example, no serial number, no batch slash IOT or no bash slash lot, no data, no date value for that particular instance or the product type, or can additional item attributes be entered into good ID to identify and describe a particular instance of an item? Um, if, if we're asking if in good ID, if it'll include the lot expiration date, um, no. No, it would only have that G10 barcode, that 14 number barcode um, associated with it in good ID. The lot and expiration or serial number is only specific to the package you have in your hand. Um, so it that all of that information would not be in good ID, no. All right. And then the next question we have here is the FDA slash Congress proposing a law to move UDI toward DSCSA legal framework. That is uh, that that is the suspicion right now. Um, the FDA has uh, published some some reviews of the DSCSA, um, and it's been done before where labeling uh, standards will kind of take from other pieces of legislation. So it's. The uh, the UDI standard, like Kate mentioned, has been um, it basically adoption has been in in the works for what about ten years, mm -hmm. and that's about the timeline that happened for uh, the the pharmaceutical side of things. And the the rollout was always with the mindset of putting enforcement in place, but just giving manufacturers lots of time to uh, to figure it out. All right, and then the next question we have here, we have seen HIBCC barcodes and our barcode scanners cannot read properly. Is this a problem for hospitals? We can read the GS1 barcodes. Yes, do, uh, Kate, do you want me to handle this one? Yeah, go for it. HIBIC barcodes, right. gotta love them, yeah. So yeah, HIBIC, uh, for people who don't know, HIBIC is, is a, just another standard of barcode. Uh, it's an older standard and it is uh, less, structured than the G10. Um, and so, yeah, it can be a challenge if you have barcode scanning software that doesn't know how to parse it. Um, we have HIBIX st still in circulation, but uh, any new, is, I won't say always, but I'm pretty sure it's basically true that any new part barcode or ID registration is going to be UDI. I don't see any situation where a HIBIC, a new HIBIC would be, uh, would be registered. And uh, the good ID database does contain HIBICs. 
um, because there are lots of products that are years old and have been in distribution for years and will be in distribution for years to come. So it's important to capture those. And so uh, for those that, uh, yeah, it's difficult for if your system can't uh, parse uh, Hibix, um, but I would look into uh, the good ID entry for the product because uh, it probably has a UDI as well. So we, the, uh, I should also mention that every product in good ID doesn't have to have a single identifier. It has to have one UDI, but it can have other identifiers. And that could be a Hibic, uh, that could be a package or a box or a palette barcode. So the, uh, the database allows for basically subsidiary uh, identifiers as well as the UDI. All right, and then we have a follow-up question to the single-use device question. Since sure. it's a single-use device, should the barcode be placed on each individual project, or sorry, product, or is it acceptable to use only one barcode for a package containing multiple single-use devices? Um, well, generally, um, if it's a package, it does have a barcode that will hold all of the information for what's inside of it. So if it's got those five items, that, that barcode is going to include the five items that are inside of it. Yeah, yeah. In a, yeah, in the clinical settings, we will sometimes have a situation where hopefully they get the right barcode. But if you have a box of five products, it will have the same. It the, all five products are the same lot and expiration. So the sometimes the clinician will keep that box in their control room, and then the, when they're setting up the case, they just they say, "Okay, I have five cases today," and they just scan that box five times. That decrements the uh, products from inventory, and then those individual products actually never get scanned. But because the box barcode contained the UDI, they can just capture it that way, and then use it in the case. So I hope that answers the question. All right, and that's the last of our Q&A session. Um, if you guys have any more questions for um, our speakers today, you can find their information on the screen. Um, if you wanna reach out, out to us here at AIM, learn more about um, our initiatives, you can reach out via the information on the screen and thank you guys for joining me. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.